In this lecture, we're going to formally state some of the properties that we've observed in our exploration of Z-transforms this far regarding the region of convergence. We've seen that there's three possibilities for the region of convergence. It can lie exterior to a circle of radius r sub r. It can lie interior to a circle. And we had the interior of a circle when we were looking at the non-causal or anti-causal exponential sequence. And it can lie in a ring. Those are the three possibilities that we can have for the region of convergence. In this case, we had when we had a signal that extended to the right and to the left, it was exponential in both directions. We had an example of the ring. And of course, the ROC cannot contain any poles because the definition of a pole is that x of z equals to infinity at the pole, which of course corresponds to the z transform not existing. Third, if the DTFT exists, that is, the expression for the discrete time Fourier transform is absolutely summable, then it turns out the ROC includes the magnitude z equals 1, that is, the unit circle. And this relationship goes the other way as well. If the ROC for the z-transform includes the unit circle, then the DTFT will exist. And of course, this follows from the fact that the DTFT is defined in terms of the z-transform by setting z equals e to the j omega. In other words, evaluating z on the unit circle. Next, if x of n is a finite duration sequence, in other words, it's zero, outside of some interval n1 to n2, so for lower case n less than capital N1, and for lower case n greater than capital N2, we're assuming that x of n is 0. Well, in this case, the ROC is all the z-plane except possibly z equals 0 or infinity. So for the z-transform to exist, it has to be absolutely summable, and that's what I've written here is a sum from little n equals capital N1 to capital N2 of the absolute value of x of n z to the minus n. And that has to be less than infinity. Well, since this sum has a finite number of terms, it's going to converge if all the terms in the sum are finite. And therefore, we only have two possibilities we have to exclude. If there's a z inverse term, in other words, if there's a positive n, then we can't have z equals 0 because the inverse would blow up. On the other hand, if there's a z term, in other words, if one of the n's are negative, so that this is z raised to a positive power, then we have to exclude z equals infinity. But other than those two possibilities, the z transform for a finite duration sequence has a region of convergence equal to the entire z plane. If we have a right-sided signal, as shown here, what that means is that the signal is zero for all values of n less than some value n2, so it's non-zero to the right of capital N2, then it turns out that the ROC extends outward from the pole with the largest magnitude. So in this case, this pole here is the one with the largest magnitude or the largest radius. If we draw a circle that passes through that pole, then that will define the region of convergence to be the region outside of this, with the exception of possibly z equals infinity, depending on whether n2 is greater than 0. On the other hand, if the signal is left-sided, as shown down here, and that means that the signal is 0 to the right of some time index capital N1, then the region of convergence extends inside a circle whose radius is given by the magnitude of the pole closest to the unit circle, or the pole with the smallest magnitude. Depending on whether n1 is positive or negative, we may have to exclude the possibility of z equals 0. Now we've seen both of these properties in examples that we've already considered. When we've looked at right-sided signals, we've noticed that the region of convergence is outside of all the poles, whereas with left-sided signals we've seen that the region of convergence is inside all of the poles. Third case is if we have a two-sided signal. In other words, the signal extends in both directions, 
then the ROC is going to look like a ring and the ring is going to be bounded by poles. So we'll have a pole on the inside surface of the ring and we'll have a pole on the outside surface of the ring. And we've seen several examples of this as well. And the other thing we've noticed is that not all two-sided signals have Z transforms. There are some signals where there's no values of Z for which the Z transform converges. Now there's some additional properties that have to do with relating pole locations and region of convergence to the properties of systems and we'll look at those in a later lecture.